Welcome, Cyril. Welcome, Rosemary. Welcome, Hester. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sir, hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, it is a joy to see him. I wish he could see us. Yes, we can see you all. Yes. <laughs> And now just to explain the procedure, we want Cyril to speak to us about his art work and his painting and his book. And then I will give a little bit of a input about the development of the book. Hello, um, it's Can you see so, um, can you repeat it again? I can. We want Cyril to speak about his book and okay. his artwork. And, the, and then we have two of the contributors of the book who will share their reflections. Yes, yes, and if I may, I will voice over okay. while he is speaking. Okay, okay. No. Okay. Okay, you're gonna stop it now. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I suggest everyone put it on speaker view. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. But I can't see you. I can imagine you there. Can you understand me? Yes, we can. Let me explain to you about the book. The book reflects from my memory. Before I became totally blind. I have memory from when I had my sight in my mind. Yes. So, do you think a friend many things? It reflects many things that are in my heart. That's in my mind and heart. Let's see. But the main thing is what is in my soul. I think of people like and the flowers. The sun, the scenery, it's like a photo in my brain and I put it on canvas. This book will help people this will help people to become aware that my silence and to bring it to people and to open their eyes of of me being deafblind, 
but they can be aware of my wonderful memories and reflections expressed in canvas. I hope the book will help people will help people to know the wonders of my abilities with my deaf blindness. I want to explain to you how I draw. Let me show you the canvas. There you can see I've got the canvas. I think of the sunflower and the shape of a sunflower. And I take the string <laughs> and the scissors and glue. And the glue. Then I cut it and put it to make the round circle. Then I put all the shapes. I cut a small section for each petal to make the shape. The shape of the leaf, the stem. Long time. That maybe takes two hours. <laughs> when I finish the string, tactile, I, I feel it. Hmm. Then I take a tube of paint, yellow. It's got braille, and I put it on my finger, and I then color it in with my finger. Then different color. When I finish, I ask Hester to check if everything is correct. That's the way I do it. Yes, now uh, Hester, Hester. Oh, okay. I must tell you where I got the talent. Talent. Yes. You know where I go? My, my grandfather, my mother's father. My grandfather was a silversmith. Got it? Beautiful thing, candlesticks. Hey, 
Uh, and my cousin be, Pippa. I hope be, she's there. <laughs> to be with me. No. She is. She is. Steve taught me everything I And Steve taught me. I got this talent from my grandfather. Wonderful. Now, I, I think because. Hello? Yes. Hester, Hi. because Cyril. Art, it would be good to give some time now for people to ask him some questions. I have one question already, and I'm okay. going to put it in writing. Okay, who, who will talk? What's the name of Peyton? Can they put the their person hand up? is Fiona Mac Maskell. And now I've put the question in the chat box. Can you see the question? How does he know this color? He is cheap, is the only killer. Yes. It has a braille, tells me what the color is on the tube. Then it tells me it's yellow. But how how does he mix the colors? Because he he sometimes mixes colors. Green. Yes. I remember from yellow and red make orange. Yes. Yes. Uh, then I work out if I want it with more yellow in or more red in it. What what shade of orange? Purple is blue and red. Green. Uh, yes. Mauve. Mauve. Uh, mauve is purple mixed with white. Cyril, there's a question from Christopher in the chat. What is your favorite thing to draw? What is your favorite thing to draw? Or to paint? It's difficult for me to say because it's because whatever inspires me at the time, then I express if, even if it's a nude. Or a scenery. Great. Now, Hester, can you see the can you see the question in the chat box from Eugene? Yeah, but, um, EJ. Up, but they, 
they came up, but they went through too quickly. So okay. I mean, don't do it again. I told okay. I went, wait, quickly. You, the question from Eugene. Okay. In the chat. It is nice to meet you. I am a candidate to the priesthood with an independent Catholic group. I want to say you are an inspiration to me, own vocation, especially the way you use your art to make the world more compassionate and beautiful. May God bless you. Guys, I think keep your comments short. Always remember, it has to go through me and through two interpreters. Um, Mary, is that a question? Could nobody have to type in the chat box? It's, yeah, it's not a question. It's a comment. You are an inspiration uh, comment, to yeah, Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Can you see it? Yes, yes, I can see it. You're on Boris. Okay, okay. Um, there's a question from Martin Ryan. Cyril, do you do any free form drawings as well as color paintings? In other words, do you do ordinary drawings, not just paintings. Can you tell me, could I matter, do you use, sorry? Let's all use capitals. From when I was young, I can draw with the pencil. But, but now, with the string, it's much better now. It's more tactile. I can feel the painting. Martin, uh, if I may respond as well, obviously you haven't got the book yet because the book has several, several free-form drawings from Cyril's earlier time uh, in experimenting. So you will see quite a few free-form drawings. Okay. Now, Cyril. Yes. When I was about 13 years old, my father and the children of me teaching me how to do. When I was about five, my father encouraged me to go to art classes. She did me cold, great family, so I was carried many, many years ago. Yes, Africa. I didn't get the name of an artist of South Africa many, many years before that I took lessons with him. And I showed you the first student. And I sat in a student circle. I asked the art teacher, he told me to wait, be patient. I waited and waited. Then 
Oh, uh, when we were going to paint, a young woman walked in with a gown. He took it off. I got my eyes opened. I got a shock. Oh, my Lord. That was my first art lesson. Painting a, a nude. Then when I did the drawing, <laughs> they said, well done. <laughs> I missed some of that it, it, from, the, from the internet connection here. I missed some of the words. Um, I'm very conscious of the time and I would like to call on one of the contributors to the book, that is Tally Palmer, who painted, uh, who commented on the painting of the two parrots. And uh, if Tally could speak to us now about this painting and why she was inspired to reflect on it. Tell if you would unmute and put your video on. Hello everyone and hello Cyril. Um, I love being outdoors and Cyril's birds caught the space I love very deeply. Larry, would you like me to go on with just the reflection? Yes, please, yes. Please okay. do, yes. Sure. So, what I wrote was in movement and in stillness. Enjoy. I love windows. They frame snippets of the world. Here, right now, my window frames a bright blue sky and green leaves that are windblown and tossing. Behind the glass, the room is warm and I can breathe the sunlight. Some years ago, in another blue sky day, a flight of sulfur-crested cockatoos landed noisily on my Sydney apartment veranda, eagerly pecking at sunflower seeds. Imagine having no, sorry, imagine having no hands, I remarked to my son. Imagine having no wings, he replied. It's a delicate balance of what we have and have not. We can be overwhelmed either way or delighted. In between, we can be peaceful. These two bright birds Agreed. with their green leaves and their blue sky seem peaceful, companionable. They seem both and, not either or like us, both secure and off balance. We teeter along between many polarities and each position offers its terrors as well as rich learning. If I listen to these birds with the ear of my heart, this is what they are saying to me. Enjoy the blue sky. It speaks to you of immense unfathomableness. It is the bowl of the stars, the universes, the galaxies, and perhaps infinity. <laughs> Can't get them to stop. Um, enjoy the green leaves. They tether you to this astonishing earth. 
each leaf is home to the tiny things that stitch carbon together, using sunlight to make food, the cleanest way of making energy. And the parrots say, enjoy our wing-folded stillness with the wonder of flight tucked into them. Enjoy our stillness and our movement. One solid, one leaning, one inclined to reflection and the other. We are together and apart. We have the companionableness of being two and the solitariness of our own particular space. We are gorgeously imperfect, one with a splodgy beak and the other with an awkward tilt. We are who we are. You are who you are. Open to the immensities of untold freedoms, multiplying options, savor and enjoy them in movement and in stillness. Enjoy. Thank, <clears throat> thank you, Tally. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and I wonder if Cyril <laughs> would like to respond. My cousin, uh, my cousin had a parrot in a cage and he let the parrot rest on my hand. It was a big parrot. I was a little bit scared it would bite. But no, she said, let it walk. And it walked up my arm. I could feel the parrot and its body and its beak. That's why I had the memory of the parrot. Bird. Bird. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. And a bird. I see the, the parrot to represent a person to express freedom. To express who you are. Um, here is a, here is a response by Fiona Maskell. I was completely blown away by the painting of the two parrots. I found Tally Palmer's reflection so profound with its happy paradox and holding even of stillness and movement. So there's a comment there, Cyril, from someone who found that the painting was very inspiring and Tally Palmer's reflection was very inspiring. I'm not, I'm, I'm, weak. I'm not going to respond to Mike Batley right now because it's not apropos what we're dealing with. Uh, it's a personal message. We're talking about um, Cyril's paintings, right? And there is another person who wanted to share today and she visited Cyril uh, a year or two ago, Michelle Gorry. Michelle 
Gauri, she reflected on the painting of the tulips, the tulip flowers. But sadly, Michelle's husband is very ill with COVID and he's in ICU and she's very distressed. So she's not able to be with us. But I am going to read her reflection on the two of uh, the tulips. Is that all right? Okay, and I'm going to put it up on the chat. Um, all right, can you see it, everyone? This is uh, from Michelle Gorry, and she sends you lots of love and hugs. Let me just find the painting so that I can put it up on, here it is, for all to see from the book. Book of the, what Michelle called a, rain, a rainbow of tulips because of all the different <laughs> colors. <laughs> tulips come in every tu Cyril's tulips in this painting have a colorful personality just as his life has represented so much color tulips come in every color of the rainbow the pink tulip is a symbol of family love The red tulip declares love and asks for trust. It is not simply romantic love, but also the sacrifice of love. Uh, the yellow tulip the yellow tulip represents a cheerful warm and welcoming smile a tulip that reminds me much of Cyril with his alive and welcoming smile when he feels you there and when he receives a hug Mm -hmm. Touch is vital for Cyril. He touches my heart. Uh, where am I? <laughs> I've lost what I was. I had up there. He touches my heart with his perseverance not only in painting, but in everything. The white tulip represents forgiveness and starting anew. Cyril has lived a life of forgiveness and had to start anew many times in his life for different reasons. <laughs> the green tulip, uh, sorry, the green stems and leaves in the painting describe faithfulness and nature's energy. It is the color of Mother Nature. <laughs> And then in the blue background, I feel both tranquility yet mood telling me that no matter the storms, winds, currents and challenges that have surrounded Cyril, my tulip, All the situations he has faced, 
He is still standing tall like the tulips he has painted, full of boldness and full of color. Mm -hmm. We just take just okay. We just translate it. What they say? Okay. Okay, you got it. And now a comment from Janet, who's in charge of our publications. From Janet, she says the tulip painting is my favorite. <laughs> Okay, so I'll watch you say something. Okay. Comment. The tulip. The tulip. Oh, it is an expression from my personality. The tulips are an expression from my personality, my love for nature that comes from my personality. And I put myself on the canvas in what I paint. That is art. Okay. As, can you see a comment in the chat, Hester, Rosie from Bonnie? Yeah, I, love I, saw, the, I saw it come out and then it disappears again. From and then Bonnie. it disappears. Yeah. I love the tones and hues in your background. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Is there anybody that wants to type a question? or make a comment in the chat box. Mm. From Tally, it has been a privilege to be part of Cyril's book and I'm sure she speaks for every contributor who has been part of Cyril's book. <laughs> now, um, if I may, I, because I know Mike Batley wanted to speak about um, his early connection with Cyril, what I'm going to do is provide you with Cyril's email address so you can write to him personally about any personal matter such as your connection with him in the past. But right now we are uh, celebrating his book and I have another comment about one of his paintings from Moira Boshoff. I love the drawing of hands and keep getting drawn back to that picture. That is one of the first uh, uh, items that appears in the book, the large hand and the small hand touching it. Can Cyril Tell us a little bit about that drawing of the hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of his pop drawing of his hand. 
It's, it's no, it is a, one of his earliest drawings that he ever did with Jan Hahn, and it's a large hand and a small hand, and it is similar to Michelangelo painting of God creating Adam and the hands touching. Oh, oh, hands. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Yes, the Michelangelo. The power of touch. I've lost him. Sorry, want to repeat again? Got away. Yes, oh, he stopped. I've lost him there. He stopped. Okay. It's, it froze. Sorry, it froze. It was frozen. Can you repeat? Yes, the power of creating life. Okay. Uh, see, tell me, uh, is uh, Speaks of creativeness. Bringing to life and how we come to life. So obviously, thank you, Cyril. And then there is a comment. Are you okay with that? Uh, there is a question. Can you please um, tell us about this symbolic painting? of the bond of love, this drawing, where there are two people uh, with each one having a different color, but where they intersect, merge from the, the, the two wedding rings, the ring of the colors. Can you see it? I remember that painting. Can you tell us why you painted that beautiful symbol? Can you tell us why? Okay, you want you that, Rosie? Can you yeah. tell us why yeah. you painted that one? Mm -hmm. um. The bond of love, a bond, we cannot live alone, we must have personal bonds, 
We are created to have bonds with people and to develop to develop life through bonds. For example, I am deaf blind. I cannot see or hear. You would think that I'm cut off from people. But that's not true, no. I, I a bond with life, with people. It has nothing to do with my deaf blindness. It's with my soul. That's where I experience a bond with people. Thank you. There is a... There, yeah, carry on. Carry on. Moreover, thank you, Larry, for producing the book. I want to tell you that this book will be a powerful to show the people that deaf blindness can be terrible, but no. What do you do with deaf blind people? The book is, will give hope to people to know that this is the creative life of a person, deaf or blind, or mentally ill, if there is life and it's creative, and it's a creative life that's open to all people. And especially with people with disabilities. Now, we, we promised Cyril to keep this uh, to an hour. It is tiring for him and his interpreters. But may we ask him to share with us he last week celebrated his golden jubilee as a priest. 50 years of ordination. But why does he call himself rabbi priest? Why does he call himself rabbi priest, which is in the title of the book? Because of my love for Judaism is part of my life. I became a Catholic priest, but that's part of my life. I embrace Judaism and Christian faith. For example, I observe the Christian faith has its roots in Judaism. Practical things. Oops, I lost that, sorry. But it's rooted in Judaism. Okay, carry on. Becomes 
Fifty years of my audience. I went through, I persevered in my faith to maintain both Judaism and new faith. I see it as part of all of a whole inclusive inclusive so you celebrate your golden jubilee as rabbi father cyril <laughs> yes he always finds that amusing rabbi father it, it, with uh, Cyril, I, I just want to, because we've got five minutes, I want to give Rosie and Hester the opportunity, if you can please just have a look at the gallery view of the Zoom meeting and see and tell him there are 36 participants and uh, we won't he, some, he knows, some he knows and some he doesn't know and uh, we are going to uh, let him know who was present there okay martin ryan you know well martin ryan is greeting you And you, yes, okay. And there are many others, and we're keeping a note, and I will put them in a list, which I will send to you by email. So don't despair. It'll be much easier for you to find out who was here when I send you the email. Okay. Uh, because it's been absolutely wonderful. And... Um, I just want to ask uh, my sister Bonnie if Bonnie would you mind giving a closing comment? Hello, um, who would you want to close to the comment? You or Sarah? Bonnie, Bonnie, yeah, Bonnie, I'm Larry's sister. Can you hear me? Have you got that, Bonnie? Tell Cyril it's my sister, Bonnie. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. She will give a closing comment because she's played a key role in promoting the book. Can you not get me, you? Rosemary? Yeah, I, okay. I can hear you, but um, I, can, okay. I can see Bonnie, but I can't hear. Bonnie's talking. Okay, I will voice over for her. I'll repeat. Um, Go ahead, Bonnie. Okay, I, I am one of the very privileged people. To I am have, one of the privileged people to have participated to have participated in writing a reflection on one of the paintings. In writing a reflection on one of the paintings. I chose the one of the hand. I chose the, hand. the one of the hands. And it became a poem. And it became a poem. Very, uh, very um, um. Um, 
Selling the book and having many people uh, contact me. To and having people contacting me and asking me for copies. This brings to mind each time the wonderful, deep relationship I have with Cyril going back 40 years brings back to me the wonderful relationship I've had with Cyril going back 40 years. So promoting your book keeps me close to you. So promoting your book keeps me close to you. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. And um, I think we must give you the last word. Would you like to please say a few final words? And then please give us your blessing, your blessing as the rabbi priest. <laughs> okay, ready? Yes, please go ahead, Cyril. The blessing. We thank God for the wonderful gift. This book of art shows you who I am. I give my blessing to you. Let us pray. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob shine upon you. May his light give you faith and hope. The blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Cyril. It's wonderful to see you. And we can't wait for you to come back to South Africa. And do a tour to promote your book. Thank you, Larry. I'm carrying on with art. Maybe there'll be a new book. <laughs> sure, we'll do that one day. Yes. I didn't get that repeat. What? <coughs> maybe. 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 We plan. <laughs> oh, maybe we plan. We should plan to set up an art gallery for people to come and see my painting. Okay. Page. 
Some of my paintings I gave away as presents. But I'm busy with new paintings. So I've got new ones. I think he's saying, watch this space. Okay, Cyril, we will do that. In the meantime, we still have to publish your other called Still on That Journey, the second volume of your autobiography, which we have uh, started editing. So that will be the next book to publish. Very yeah. Very next year. I'll be producing my third book. I invite Martin Ryan to help with editing my third book. So we're, we'll prepare for that. Okay. All right, Cyril. It's been wonderful to spend this time. There are many, many comments from people to say thank you for meeting you and for mm. expressing yourself so beautifully. And we hope to see you soon in South Africa again. And uh, I know there are people <laughs> elsewhere, Canada and England, but please come and uh, we will do a tour to promote your books. And a big thank you to Hester and Rosie for interpreting for Cyril. And to Eugene for hosting this. Everybody for attending. And we feel very sad to say goodbye. <laughs> we will meet again. God bless you and goodbye. God bless you. Thank you, Cyril. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye now. God bless. <laughs> Blowing a kiss. Thank you.